I'm going to go ahead and start this recording. Again, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. My name is Terrence Gibson. I'm the International Director of Bigger and Better Business. And as part of our Holistic Wellness Month series, we have part five, which is our final presentation by Brother Shannon Lee Sr. For He's a financial and credit life coach for Financia Lee Free LLC. Brother Lee will be talking about credit restoration tonight. And before I turn it over to uh, Brother Lee, I want to let you guys know that as he's doing this presentation, we would like for you guys to save all of your questions until the end. Um, I will be monitoring them in the chat, making sure I jot them down. And we will definitely make sure that we read off the questions so we can get your questions answered in a timely manner. And also before I begin, I would like to start out with a prayer because I always like to make sure that, you know, the Holy Spirit, God and our angels is in the house. So with that being said, I would like for everybody to bow your heads in your respective places. Father God, we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to listen to the words of wisdom and creativity from our very own brother, Shannon Lee. And we thank each and every participant that is on the call and everyone that will be joining the call. And Lord, pray that the information that is provided by Brother Lee sinks in and brothers and sorrows in the community manifest, it manifests within. And these blessings we ask in your name, Lord, we pray, amen. And to that end, I'm gonna turn it on over to Brother Shannon Lee Sr. Brother Shannon Lee Sr., the floor is yours. All right. Okay, hey, so Brother Gibson, can you hear me and can you see me, sir? I can hear you. I can see you. I can, I can, all the above. <laughs> all right. Okay. Hey, so greetings, everybody. Um, hopefully it's not so much of an echo. I am in a hotel. I had to travel, which is what a lot of our brothers and sisters are doing. This is a, a very big weekend. A lot of people are celebrating it. Um, so we understand. Um, we're going to try to use the three Bs. We're going to try to be brilliant. We're going to try to be brief, but we will be gone once we get done with that. Uh, as uh, uh, Brother Gibson said, you know, if you have questions, please, you know, put them in there. Um, I just don't want to uh, get stuck in one area. I want to try to get the slides out there uh, um, uh, in the event that someone, you know, because I may answer your question uh, even whenever you have it. Uh, but if not, I will get to it. I'll do my best to get you the right answer towards the end. Um, but let me do something real quick. Um, let me give it back always to Sean Parker out of Alpha Alpha Theta Sigma chapter for even uh, recognizing my, my gift, uh, uh, you know, almost just short of a year ago, um, when I, when I first came in as Sigma and then also, uh, big brother Charles, uh, Thomas out there, you know, he is another that is also pulled and, uh, and, and, and linked with me and, and allowed me to get on the, the state level. And then I'm sorry, the regional level. And then also brother Gibson again, man, I just really, and truly, I am grateful uh, if it was one person on the call, if it was just you and I, and you told me to get a presentation, I'll do it anyway, uh, because I just appreciate you uh, giving the opportunity. At the end of the day, uh, my mother used to say it all the time, if you know better, you'll do better. I never got that until I got, this was a situation that if I'd known better a long time ago, I would have done a lot better a long time ago, but that's okay. All right, so with that being said, I, again, once again, I'm Shannon L. Lee Sr. Uh, welcome to the call to any of the, the chapter leadership, uh, state leadership, regional leadership, uh, and any same thing for my sorrows out there is just a light. Um, don't want to you know call it the wrong way, but any of the leadership out there, thank you for taking time out your busy schedule um, to try to get this information uh, to your folks as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so you, I'll always start my presentations with the state of America because this changes all the time. Uh, and I will tell you, and I'm gonna read this all because I really want you to pay attention to this, if you will. Um, right now, and this is something that we get that get updated. We do this right here weekly uh, because the numbers change. But it says about 68 million people have a 620 credit score or lower. Just a few, just actually about two months ago, it was up to 74 million. So some people are out there. That tells us that people are either listening to me or listening to people like me, or they're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being told no, uh, and they're working on their credit. So that has dropped down uh, um, from 72 to 68 million. That is good. So, you know, I'm happy about that because I don't like to see or think that what we do, we're doing it in vain. 
Uh, and then nearly, nearly half of Americans don't even know their credit scores. As an adult, I, I tell you, when you become 18, 19, 20, 21, it's like a lifeline. You, we got to make sure we're talking to people about that. I understand it's not a subject that everybody want to talk about at home. But one thing about credit, it ain't if it's going to affect you. It's when. It's when. It, 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 it's when. Because if you keep living, all right, you know, I get it. a lot of people want to pay things with cash. But I'm going to tell you, unless you got a whole lot of cash somewhere down the line, credit is going to end up meeting you somewhere down the line. Average debt is about 225000 That's because people got houses, cars, and things like that right there, with many having less than 500 in savings. All right? That's it. it listen, and, and we got credit card debt. We got all kind of different debt as well. All right? So 49% have no retirement. We got people just work, man. And the people used to tell them, say, man, listen, you're going to work yourself to death. I don't like that terminology. You understand what I'm saying? You should have a plan. Whatever we're doing, somewhere down the line, uh, um, um, you should have a plan on how you're going to retire. All right? And it says, like it says, 49% have no retirement. 18% uh, don't even know they're on track to reach their income goals for retirement. So people just working, man. Just going to work every day. And please, I'm not accusing nobody of nothing. I did 26 years in the military, but I couldn't do no more. You understand what I'm saying? I had enough was enough. My goal was 30, but my body says something different. Uh, but I'm grateful for that. 65% family, please listen to me. And I'm going to touch on this slightly tonight. I understand it's credit restoration, but all this falls under the umbrella of the things that I do in my business. But 65% have no will. That is not good. 65, that's more than 50% of Americans that don't have a will. 82% have no trust. All right. And 71% have no power attorney. So somebody can act on your behalf if something happens to you, even if you're still living. All right, over 58 billion people in unclaimed life, uh, uh, 58 billion in unclaimed, uh, unclaimed life insurance policies, bank accounts, pension stocks. We saying people leaving here that have some nice things and assets, but because they didn't have their paperwork in order, the family can't even get to it. You see what I'm saying? Because we didn't take care of affairs. All right, we take care of everything but that type of stuff. So uh, I'm going to touch on that a little bit later on as well. So um, it's a couple of things out there just to kind of loosen it up tonight because I'm very passionate about what I do. And you can add to the list. This is just some of the things um, I talked to some of my staff member about there. You know, these are some dates that we all need to know and remember. All right. Of course, we should always know date of births. Everybody know that. We need to know date of births. All right. When your mom was born, when your daddy was born, when you was born, all those type of things. Social security numbers. All right. That's what makes us who we are in, in America. That's how we get things tied to our name by social security. Got to know those. Anniversary. It's pretty good, though. I understand some people forget them. But you might want to remember those to keep peace in your house. Mother's Day. All right. If you do forget it, the world's not going to let you forget it. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's one of the most popular days in the world, rightfully so. All right. But here's one that I think that we need to know. And remember, I put this one on there myself. Credit scores. All three of them. You need to know those credit scores. You should know your credit scores. As long as you're working, got a family, got children, got responsibilities and things attached to you, you need to know your credit scores because, it's, again, it's like a lifeline. It's not if you're going to need it, it's when. And most people don't get, to, don't get, they always get jammed up when. All right. So, all right. Here's a couple of things we're going to cover tonight. I'm going to, I got a couple of slides <clears throat> because what happens is every year, I was talking to Brother Gibson a little bit earlier. Every year since I've been in business over the last six years, being retired, uh, we we do what we call a mid-year, um, just kind of, you know, want to wrap up and see what is it that people, what, what's hindering people, or what do people think they know about credit? We call it first, second, third order effect. You know, what people are saying, what they think they know, and what's the truth, all right? So it's third, first, second, third order effect. And we tied those into myths. So I'm going to address some of those myths tonight. And uh, you probably heard them, seen them. You might even know them, okay? And if it's one that sticks out to you, by all means, to write it down so I can go into detail about it um, because I want to make sure that you feel you, that you fully understand that a lot of the stuff I'm putting out tonight, it's got a question, but it has an answer. All right, so number one, so many people think credit agents are empowered with government authority. You get people that won't even ask the phone if you get some kind of phone call from a creditor or a credit bureau there. Those people don't, you can talk, I ain't telling you you need to be rude to them, but you, you listen, you have a right, man, to speak those folks. You don't have to dip and dodge those people, all right? They don't have any authority like that. All right, it says credit agencies have no legal authority at all. They are simply private companies who are in the business of selling credit information. Yeah, you can fight back with them, say, listen, I, I just don't have it right now. Unless you calling me to make a payment arrangement, all right, then I don't want you calling me anymore. You can say that, especially when they talk about this call is being recorded. You can say, well, I'm recorded as well. 
I promise you, if you tell them that right there, they'll hang up the phone and keep it pushing. All right, that is a fact. I've done it myself. Myth number two, the credit agencies are required by law to keep derogatory items on your credit report for seven to 10 years. Now, I've been dealing with credit for a long time. I was in Walmart one time, and I had this brother. He's, I was wearing a credit shirt, and he came. He was like, hey, man, we just got into it. But fast forward, he was like, uh, you know, you can't get a bankruptcy. Once you get a bankruptcy, your life is over. I was like, who told you that? I said, no, man, that's not true. That's not true. Well, here's the bottom line up front. There is no law that credit agents report anything on you, on you at all. They don't even have to report your good stuff. This is why your scores vary, all right? Because guess what? You can go in there and say, man, I've been making all my credit card payments on time. It's showing an experience, but it's not lining up in Equifax and TransUnion. Well, they don't have to report that. It's no law, all right? Because they work on money. Whichever one of the creditors that pay the three credit bureaus, all right, to report your information is who's going to report the information. I'm going to give you guys a secret real quick. I want to share something with you real fast, okay? You can just take this from the heart. The creditors get paid more for reporting. The credit bureaus get paid. Equifax TransUnion Experience get paid more for reporting your negative credit than your positive credit. Watch this. So, for example, and then I'm going to move on, but I want you to hear me real well. So, for example, if you pay... If you have a mortgage, everybody on this call, we all have a mortgage, just to say that, a mortgage. We're not a rental, but mortgage. And we pay our mortgage on time. What the, what the, uh, what the mortgage companies do to, to get it reported at Equifax TransUnion Experience, they pay $10, $10, $10. All right, they pay $10, $10, $10 per person for bills that they pay on time to report it to all three credit bureaus. That's why they're billion dollar companies. Because if all of us are paying, that's a lot of money. $10, $10, $10 per person to each credit bureau, all right? But watch this. It costs them $100 per person to report negative credit. That's why it's so hard to get it off because they make money off of negative credit. 100, 100, 100. That's why you fighting and scrapping real hard to get your credit fixed, uh, get your credit restored because they make more money having that stuff reported to them monthly. That's a fact. I've been to all three of the credit bureaus. All right, I want to share that with you real quick. We're going to keep pushing. Myth three, uh, it is impossible to get a bankruptcy off. I just covered that. Bankruptcy come off just like any other derogatory item. All right, if, 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 <clears throat> all you have to do is have the right paperwork. All right, just because you went bankruptcy, it don't mean it has to be reported to the credit bureau. It don't mean it didn't happen, but it don't mean that it has to go to the credit bureaus. All right, and I'll show you guys something a little bit later. Myth four, the information on your credit report cannot be changed. Old address, misspelling the names, phone numbers, Yes, it can. As a matter of fact, right now, if you're not listening, nothing else I'm telling you, if you are working on your credit or got somebody in your family, you need to go inside to have your credit report pulled. Anything that's up in there that's not current to where you are right now, you need to have it changed. For example, I was in the military. I had a PCS in the military. I, I went to nine different duty stations. So I had nine different addresses on there in other places that I went. <clears throat> Some people had more. But when I retired, not all those things were still affected because the credit bureaus don't know who you are and where you're at. But you lose a lot of points. Once I wiped off those old addresses and those old phoners and updated uh, my name to senior versus just Shannon L. Lee to Shannon L. Lee senior, my current address, my current phone number, I ended up gaining about 80 points on my credit score, credit report, all three of them, just because of that alone. You got to do that like yesterday. You got to do that. When I leave my, my information in here, you need to send me an email, text or something saying, how do I get that letter? How do I get that information, Brother Lee? Because I need that. OK, because that is not true. And you're losing points monthly every every time, every month. It's not a one and done that you don't correct. That is why they tell you you need to pull your credit report at least twice a year. People say annually. No, it's free one time. And but you need to do it at least twice. All right. So that you can make sure that the most latest and greatest information is on your credit report. Is it illegal or more to have information on your credit report altered or removed? That kind of go hand in glove with what I just talked about. Now, they can't add nothing to your credit report. All right. They can't add anything. But a lot of times creditors do. Well, you say, isn't that illegal? Well, I just stated that it is. But why is it legal? It's human error. You got 18, 19, 20, 21 years old in there typing information in there, in your stuff, updating everything, can't stay focused. So they make mistakes. It's human error. It's human error. That's why. But you're responsible for your credit report. You are. You got to make sure you stay on top of your stuff. That's why I said it's like a lifeline. 
Paying a past due debt removes it from your credit report. No, it does not. It's just because you pay an old debt does not mean or does not mean it's erased the fact that at one time you were not paying it on as, as agreed. A lot of times we have a lot of people, stay with me. We have a lot of people, they always say, hey, listen, when we when I came to you, Mr. Lee, we wanted to get this uh, this uh, 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 credit, uh, Capital One credit card. I wanted to delete it off of my credit report. Well, why? Well, it's got it's, it's reporting as derogatory, but when we look at it, okay, you've had it for 13, 14, 18, 19, five years, two years, three years. You've had three missed payments on it, three, but you got five good years or two good years, a, a whole year of great payments on there. Legally, we cannot delete that. We can delete the, the late payments to show it, you know, to get rid of that, but we cannot delete the entire thing. It's illegal because what a, because you can come back and sue them and say they took some good stuff out of my credit. I had five years, I only had three late payments, but five years of good payments, but only three late payments over that all that whole time. But you just wipe away a good credit mark off of my file versus just fixing the, the, the late payments. All right. Okay. If anybody's confused about that, please make sure that you bring that up. Cause a lot of times people be like, I don't quite understand that. And if this is one of those ones, I will explain it in detail a little bit later on. Inquiries are in, it says inquiries, inquiries, depending on where you're from, inquiries, inquiries are not derogatory and will not affect your credit. That is not true. Man, let me tell you something right now. I'm telling you, that is why it's so important that you know what your credit scores are before you go to, man, I've seen people go to these car uh, dealerships without already being pre-approved or already being approved. And they run your social security number in there and they, they do it. And they run it through 20 different banks. You already beat and got the car with a bad deal. And two weeks later, you still got people saying, sorry, we wasn't able to prove your credit. So anybody ever been like that, man? Anybody ever seen something like that or know somebody done something? I just want to make sure the crowd with me. Drop me some twos in the chat group real quick. Drop me some twos. And I just want to make sure you have you ever seen that before. Somebody goes to a car dealership, all right, looking for a car. First of all, you're there all day. If your credit is good, you don't have to be there all day. I can promise you that I notice when I see it. As soon as we go to these places, we see people, you've been there since eight o'clock that morning. It's five o'clock. You still in that place. That tells me right then and there that your credit, not judging, but that is not good because now you're starting to ruin your credit already. Whatever, and, and hopefully you get approved because if they pull all those inquiries, inquiries out there, you're going to get disapproved if you try to go somewhere else because they're going to say, what is it that we don't know? That's how it works. It's important to stay on top of that. Okay, if you get a derogatory item removed, it will just come back. Sometimes that is the difference in credit repair and credit restoration. Credit repair and credit restoration. I know you know a homeboy and this guy and these other folks that do it and he's a good dude and all this other stuff. I done heard it so many times. And it, 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 all those people that are circling back to a company like mine because we don't repair credit, we restore it. I understand what's the difference, Shannon. So I'll say it real quick. Watch this. First of all, when you repair someone's credit, I give an example why credit repair, depending on who it is and what they're doing, is not the safest thing to do. When it comes to home buying, you're trying to build a home. It takes seven to nine months, nine to 12 months to even build it from the ground up, depending on the weather, the season, the contracts, and all this other stuff. Watch this. When you initially get approved, someone repairs your credit and they're not legit, they can hide all those different things just to get you approved. But anybody that's done bought a home before, Right before you close, they are going to pull your credit again. And then uh, that you can't protect them. But when you restore your credit, that's what they're doing. Once it goes, it's gone. Uh, and it's gone legally. That is what, that's what they're talking about. Okay? So let's keep it pushing. The past equals the future. All right? This is just a myth. People, I've heard people say that. This is the biggest myth of all. The concept that once bad, always bad, or at least seven years is uh, a total, it's totally false. Anybody can ruin uh, run into hard times. So that's basically telling you right now, we hear people all the time say, man, I, it's it's a lost cause. I, I've actually had people say that. I'm like, well, how old are you? I'm 29. You, you say it's over already? No, it's not, man. Listen, it's no law that says, and they tell you, listen to the verbiage, that things can stay on the seven to 10 years, but they always say up to. That's the little punch word that lets you know up to seven to 10 years. Well, as long as you don't fight it, it will stay on there up to seven to 10 years. But the minute you do it, you can go in there and start fighting it right then and there. Absolutely. All right. So myth number 10, stay with me. <clears throat> I cannot restore my credit on my own. Well, actually, yes, you can. 
You can try to do it yourself, you know, just like you represent as an attorney in court of law, but you can also allow experienced professionals. That's why we highly recommend it. I understand people say, well, I don't want another bill. Well, family, listen to me. Getting your credit restoration is not a bill. That's an investment. The more you restore your credit, guess what? As your scores start going up, your insurance is going to start going down. You're going to start seeing a little different thing. I'm telling you something. Never look at it. Listen, paying your credit card, that's a bill. Fixing your credit is an investment, family. It is. It's an investment. Mindset. You cannot look at it like that, all right? Canceling credit cards boost your credit. A absolutely not. Canceling credit cards will tear your credit up. It's not the smartest thing to do. I've talked about this in the past for anybody that's new on the call. I've told a person, well, I've, I've had people ask me, well, what do I do? This credit card is not all that great. It's not, well, if you've had it for a while, ask for a product change. Call the credit card company and ask them, what's the next card up? All right, the one I have, it's not no good. And plus, I got zero balance on it. Every time I use it, well, ask them what's the best, what's the second card up, if even third card up. What do you qualify? I don't want to cancel or ask for an extension on I'm sorry, ask for a, 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 a raise on it. But don't, do not, <clears throat> do not close it because it will hurt your credit. Myth 12, you share credit with a spouse. No, everybody has their own social security number. We got adults on the call right now. It's not my words. I have people say that all the time. So many people come in and say, no, me and my wife both want to get our credit fixed right here together under the same umbrella. All right, and all of a sudden I'm saying, hey, listen, I can talk to you guys together, but I got to do you individually because you have your own individual credit score and a, a credit profile. I know it sounds like this is JV. I'm sorry. I know it sounds like it's JV, but this is extremely for the varsity right here, guys, ladies and gentlemen. It is. All right. Myth 13, kids can't have a credit report. That is not true either. So you can add. Now, initially, they don't. Initially, they don't. But you can add a child as early as 14 years old. I've seen some people do it at 10. It just depends on what bank it is. But you can add a kid. If you got great credit, you can start. A, and I highly recommend it. I did it as well. All right. I highly recommend it. And I monitor my child. But a kid will not. But once. But what, what can happen, though, is I want you to listen. It's still important because your kid, kid's social security number can still be stolen and used as identity theft. So. Now it, they can end up establishing a credit report. That's why it's also good. I, I tell everybody all the time, they have what they call um, uh, credit monitoring services out there, like LifeLock, Allstate has one, identity protection and stuff like It's good to get those for the family as a whole, especially when your child becomes a teenager, especially when they become a teenager. I've seen it happen several times. Just had a lady call me yesterday about the same situation. All right, couple more, stay with me. Uh, you must carry a credit card debt to build credit. No, first of all, that's not smart at all. All right, carrying credit card debt. Now you paying interest because you got debt on your or, or stuff on, on your credit card. You paying interest and end of year fees and all this other stuff. No, all you need to do is make sure you keep activity on the card. You don't have to carry a debt. Keep activity on it. Don't let a card sit stale because they can close it or lower your interest rate. I'm mean, not lower your interest, but lower your limit uh, uh, without your even consent. All right, because all those fine prints that's on the bottom of that thing said that you agree that you will use this card every 30 to 60 days, every 30 days, no more than 90 days without going still. And then if you don't, that's what all that other paperwork says when you get that little bit of card. Most of us get the card, tear off the back of it, activate it, take that other stuff, throw it in the trash, throw it in the drawer, never read it. But that's what they're talking about when they say that on there. You got to read that stuff or call me and I'll read it for you. All right, couple more. All right, checking your credit hurts your scores. Well, here's the bottom line. Watch this. I want you to listen real fast. I'm going to read this one to you. I don't know if you can see this whole slide. Pulling your own credit report is called a soft inquiry. You can do that. And it never hurts your credit scores, no matter how often you request it. Okay? All right. Now, when you're going through a person, a certain company, they may charge you a fee. But legally, you can get your own credit report uh, uh, as many times as possible. It's not saying well, you can only get one a year from that company. But you can go to another company and get it as well. You can go to trans, you know, you guys understand, you can go to different ones. You can get that, that same credit report as many times as you want to. You're not hurting. But when other people pull it, uh, it's a no brainer. Obviously, yes, it starts getting into affecting your credit and stuff. All right. Common myths about your credit score. Myth 16, it says you have one credit score. Everybody already know that. No, you have three. You have three credit scores. You have Equifax, TransUnion, and uh, um, um, Experian. 
All right, three, all three credit scores. That's and FICO and Vantage score are the most popular ones that you will get those scores from. There's so many other ones out there, but those are the most popular ones right there. All right. Closing the credit uh, account eases, uh, erases its history. We just talked about that. Absolutely not. Closing the account will not erase the history. No matter how bad it was, it's still going to be on there. All right, that's why we'll tell you, try not to close it if you can. Try to fix it, okay? Because now you got a close account with a bunch of bad stuff on there that's still right there piling up on you. All right, so no, that's that's not good. That doesn't erase the history. All right, so that's the miss right there. I want to give you some extra information real quick. <clears throat> All right, because a lot of people may know about this and a lot of people don't do checks anymore, but you need to be aware about this on your debit card as well. Family, please listen to me. Listen to me. It says, what does it mean when you're in check system? Many times when you end up overdrawing your account, even on your debit card, where you gave authorized your debit card, okay, and the person try to run it, you tell them, hey, just go ahead and run it on the third or whatever the case may be. They try to run it. All right, there that data is being collected and it's added into this system, right? It's called the check system. Let me read that to you just for the ones that's looking at it and not actually reading. I want you to read this. The check system is a consumer credit reporting agency that tracks activity related to closed checking, to, to closed checking, savings, and other deposit uh, deposit accounts at banks and credit unions. If you ever had issues with the uh, de uh, deposit account, uh, such as bounced or return checks, it's possible that you might have a check system profile. People try to go to other banks and they be denying you. A lot of times they don't tell you this, but because where you was at your old, it, it follows you. All right, that's why I, it behooves you. And I understand people make mistakes, but pick up the phone. If you know that you are going to have some issues or that's not going to line up with your money, sometimes it's out of your control, but still get on the phone and call them and say, hey, listen, it wasn't supposed to work like that. All right, don't just let it create a profile on you because they're not telling you that your information is going here and somewhere down the line, it's going to cause problems for you. It will. If not you, somebody you know. All right, that is extremely important. <clears throat> Here's something I want you to know about the new FICO right here real quick. I know I've talked about that before, um, but I want you to see some. So it's a new thing I call FICO 10. All right, it's called FICO 10T. All right, and it says newest credit card scores, FICO 10 and 10T made a big splash when they were introduced in 2020. Why am I even talking to you about that tonight? Primarily because of the 10T version, which looks back over your at least at least 24 months of your. I uh Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I apologize, man. But uh, looking back over 24 months of your credit activity to predict future credit behavior, this is what's the new ones out there right now. So, what are you saying, Shannon? Let me break it down real quick. A lot of times, people get their income tax or their bonuses, and then all of a sudden, you struggled all year, and then you go pay everything and get everything cut up. But creditor, but you're saying, man, I got everything paid, but my credit is still not going up. Or I'm still having issues with my three credits. The reason why is FICO 10 now looks back at your last 24 months, not whenever you finally got your hands on some money. They said, yo, but behaviors, so you can still have a 700 credit score because you paid everything up and it's going to trigger the system to raise your credit score. But FICO 10s allow them to look at your credit history. That is why it's so important to work on these things right here. I understand sometimes it's hardships and somebody can go get on me right now and say, you don't know me and it's a struggle. And I, I get it, but I'm not going to tell you to not the truth. 24 months, they're looking back at you and saying, hey, look, this is somebody's probably done experiences already saying, I, I tried to refinance my house, but they won't do it. That's why, or this could be a reason why. All right, I'm going to keep it moving because I understand we're trying to stay close on the time. All right, fam, here's something that's near and dear to my heart. Will and trust. And I understand we've been talking about miss. We talked about a check system. All right, but we're talking about last will and trust. And I'm talking about this because this is something that I see in my business as well all the time. My brothers, my sisters, please, last will, understand what this means. Express your desires for the handling of your financial and personal affairs. Make sure so many people so many people we know, all right, they get up out of here and things are not in order. They tell a man now she's resting in sleep in peace, but the family back here in turmoil, is she really, or is he really resting in peace? Or because your family, the brothers and sisters, they're not even talking to each other no more because they fight over a washing a dryer that grandmama had, a mama had, when all we had to do was handle our affairs. Take your loved ones, talk to your parents, talk to you, and go do this. A living trust, 
Here's what it does. It avoids the cost and delay of probate to spread out the distribution of your estate over time. You got properties, land, you got some investments, things of that nature. But the government will step inside there and you, your family can't get it. I don't care how long she was married to you. If you don't have this stuff in place, it doesn't matter. I know everybody said, we just graduated to saying, well, I got insurance, so she going to be all right. No, some of the other stuff you got going on, them bonuses from your job that's owed to you and different things. We got to get these things in place. Financial power attorney, all these things can go together. It designates someone to manage your financial business affairs if you are unable. Everybody, you have, you, you have some people, they're, they're, that's why they say living will, because you can still be alive and not be able to function and take care of yourself. Yeah, man, I see it all the time. I deal with this daily. Healthcare power attorney, who do you want to help? You know what I'm saying? If, if you getting malfunctioned, getting mistreated or stuff like that right there, you tell them, well, I'm going to have my wife go out there and curse them out. No, tell me how that work out. Just get this stuff in place. I'm going to keep it pushing, man, because this is near and dear to my heart right here. I'm seeing it so often, but I've done it. So I'm a, I'm a product of what I'm talking about. My wife has done it. We've all done it. Okay. All right. Let's talk about it. And then this is just a few people. It's not to highlight anything. I'm not going to be spending a lot of time on the slide. But famous people we know that didn't have a will. That family still in turmoil trying to get rights to their music and songs. And all. Jimmy Hendrix, Bob Marley, Salvatore Phillips, you know, listen, Prince, Aretha Franklin, Sandy Davis Jr., Gerald LeVert, and on and on and on and on and on and on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, so... Brother Gibson, all right, I'm going to lend you with this. Money is power, but excellent credit is key because I know we want to do some Q&As. But before you do that, I, I want to share a few things real quick, Terrence. It takes me about another two minutes. Am I good with that, Terrence? Can you give me a thumbs hey, up? Hey, do your thing. Do your thing. You got a little okay. time. That's all. Okay, so, so I'm going to touch a couple of things. Let me show you guys something. Some of these letters uh, that I'm going to show you, some things for people that do want to work on their credit. Are they saying, well, my credit is good. Or I got a good handle on that. I just got a few things on there that I want to get. I'm going to show you something real quick, right? So, for example, here's just a quick speed, a sample of a debt validation letter. Well, what is a debt validation? This letter sent in response to a phone call received. Someone's calling you talking about, did you owe a debt? And you know you don't owe it. This is an example of how you should set that letter up. You can clean it up some. This is one. I'll send this to you. All right, I'm going to show you. My email address is going to be in here shortly. All right, but if you have an issue like that, this letter, we've done it for several folks. All right, and we've done, the information is on there. If not, I'll explain it. Our Terrence will get me back on here and I'll do strictly about letters that can help you get your affairs in order just because you don't need credit repair, all right? But you do need some situation. I mean, you've got a certain situation you want to deal with. That's one, okay? Number two, all right? So here you have a bankruptcy update letter. This is what I'm telling you. You can fight that. This right here, and you says, dear TransUnion, but you dear TransUnion, dear Equifax, dear each one of them, send them the same letter. Have them. So if you've already had everything, because a lot of times people go bankruptcy, but the debts are still showing on their thing. So when the creditors, okay, you got it in bankruptcy. All right. And now you start to build your history back up. But as but soon as they go back and pull your credit, they still talk to you about some things that happened in bankruptcy. That's not how that's supposed to be. When they roll all that stuff up in your bankruptcy, it is all supposed to fall in that bankruptcy umbrella and leave from your credit profile. But if you don't make them do it, excuse me, then it won't happen. That's just a small snippet of that one right there. Late payment removal request letter. Here's what I'm going to tell you something real quick. And some people may, may know this, but I want you to hear me real well. It is legal to ask for a goodwill correction. You've been paying your stuff on time. but You've been with this company, this mortgage company, this, 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 whoever it is. You've been with them for five, six, seven, eight, 10 years, 12 or more. All of a sudden, hardship happened, man. All kind of stuff just happened. You have one or two late payments. Well, you get to go in and you, this is a great example of a letter. You can ask for good. And most of them, with you doing this, we'll remove it. They will remove it. We've done these letters for people. Yeah. When the hurricane, um, that thing happened out there in Louisiana, not Louisiana, but Texas. I'm sorry. Forgive me for that. In Texas, we've done several letters for a lot of folks. That was outside of their control. They didn't have a job to go to. How am I going to pay you? My job gone. But that didn't stop Equifax TransUnion experience. That's just another one. Stay with me. Let her remove medical collections. I hear people all the time talking, man, it's this hard time. I got all these medical things. It don't matter. Listen, technically, it's a code in there where they ain't supposed to put that stuff. Your medical stuff, 
is it really supposed to go inside, depending on what it is, in, on, in two Equifax transunion experience. That's a HIPAA violation in some cases. And most of you guys fall into those cases because this is the letter we use. As soon as we put fire to them, they go in there and remove these things. I've seen it happen on a regular basis, okay? All right, here's another one. This is talking about your financial hardship, you know. All right, this is explaining your situation to folks. You can send it to the three credit bureaus. Say, listen, man, I, I need you, or to the creditors themselves. This is a letter right here, all right? Okay, one more. I think it's one or two more, and then I'm going to wrap it up because I want to answer questions just in case. Sample letter disputing errors on your credit card bills. Some of us look on there and say, listen, I did not authorize um, um, them, them digital, uh, uh, cause those, uh, a lot of people in their car, they Cyrus, them Cyrus companies, Cyrus radio. All right. Uh, they done threw off your whole thing. You had no idea that in six months that they were going to start billing you 1999 a month. And you done budgeted your money. Now they done charge your card and you all jacked up out there and everything getting thrown off. Cause they done, you done got an unexpected charges. This letter here is what they're talking about. I need that removed. I didn't authorize them to do that. All right. And you know, and it's done throw me off. And they should have warned me first. I never received a letter stating that they were going to bill me. They just billed me. Things of that nature. That's just one example. And I can go on and on and on. All right. <clears throat> and then uh, once again, this is the uh, this is debt collector dispute letter. All right. This is a loan letter, but it's got a lot of powerful verbiage in there where you have debt correct, where they, uh, where they harassing you. They keep sending you letters. They keep doing all these. They can't do all those stuff. And you can cease that and you can have a debt removed because if you if you settled it with them verbally, you can have them say, listen, we are in agreement that I'm going to make payments to you on the first and on the 15th. Then they need to they honor that. Then they cannot go in and report that you are negative and late and all those other things to, to the three credit bureaus. It's against it's against the agreement. That's how that works. All right. So, hey, Terrence, again, and family. Um, I, I appreciate you. Um, I try not to go too fast, but I didn't want to keep everybody too long. So brother Gibbs, I'm a year to flow to you, man, just in case someone has any questions or concerns. Um, I'm here. My information is there. Screenshot that. Um, and, and I'll get the information you need. We have hundreds of different letters. Just ask me. All right. And if we don't have it, we can create it because we'll go ahead and have our lawyers tell you what they look, what the letter supposed to look like, and then we'll get it drawn up. I, I yield the flow to you, brother Gibson. Thank you so much, my man. No, thank you, Brother Lee. Uh, there were several questions in the chat. I will read them as they were um, typed in. Why is there such a big difference in your credit scores between the three companies? Okay, awesome. And that's real. Well, one thing about it, they're independently owned. They're independently owned. So they get to control their own algorithms. All right? They get to decide what they want to consider good credit and bad credit. They're not cousins, they're not friends, and they don't pick up the phone and call each other. What you don't want to see, though, is a major difference. Like, you should never see a 720 and a 510 or a 720 and a 66. You know, it should never be, um, God, and I don't want to lie to you guys. I, da, da, da. I think it's 40 points difference, give or take. It's no more than 20. I mean, it's no less than 20, no more than 40. But I promise you, I'll get that answer for that specific one, but that's why it's different because they have different algorithms under their umbrellas, if that answers the question. All right, next question. What is the website or websites to obtain free credit reports and scores? Okay, so right off the top, you can go uh, free freecreditreport.com. Um, that's one, that's the main one, okay? And it'll either lead you to others, but freecreditreport.com, that's why I highly recommend. And the reason why I'm saying that one is because it's going to break stuff down for you in detail to even a person that don't, so several of them, they'll give them to you and you can't understand them. So you're going to sit in the stack. You're going to know you got it, but start with that one. So before I give you a bunch of bad ones, start with that one. All right. Last question that I see on the chat. Does a cancellation of a debt, i.e. credit card, auto loan, et cetera, remove the item from your credit report? Uh, well, it just depends. If you had an agreement with the person that when you say cancellation, and, and I want to make sure that person that asked that, I want to answer this for real because I've seen this work two parts, if you don't mind, Terrence. So first no of all, cancella ca cancellation, if you did not get it in writing, in agreement, then they can still report it, whatever it, whatever you had on there uh, still. But if you got it in writing, if they report it, it will get removed ASAP. 
because the fair credit, uh, the uh, the FTC, fair credit, uh, the Federal Trade Commission, all right, they'll honor that letter if that answered that question. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. Anybody else um, have any questions? You can get yourself off a of mute or raise your hand, use the raise hand feature. Greetings, Brother Gibson and Brother Lee. Hey, um, sir. Hey, brother. Great, How you doing? Great presentation, confirmation, a lot of information that you shared. Um, also, I would suggest that you add the um, to your list of um, with your wills and care um, the um, durable power of attorney. Yes, sir. Um, because a lot of times, you know, the financial issues that linger on, and you can build into that um, durable power of attorney to protect from beginning to end without having any interruptions and being a notary. Um, I strongly recommend and um, been a strong proponent for durable power of attorneys. As we agree, you're absolutely right. Uh, thank you for that information. And for my slide deck, I, I, I will actually very familiar with it. I'm surprised that I didn't get that on there, but I will add that on there because that is a highlighted one and it is a need to, it, it's a very good one as well. Thank you so much for that update, brother. I did write that down and I will add that to my slide. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that add on, Brother Hamilton. Um, anybody else uh, that have any questions before we uh, conclude? Remember, no question is a dumb question. All right. Um, Brother Lee, uh, nobody else have any questions that they want to ask you for tonight? Um, so I guess you summed up. I guess you summed up everything. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity again, uh, Brother Gibson. And, and I, 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 as I told you earlier, uh, you know, I'm just grateful. Um, and uh, any, anytime, anytime you need me, uh, anybody on the call, I left my, my information up there, uh, Brother Gibson. You know, we, we had a conversation prior to this, my brother um, and, and, and Sean Parker and, and Brother Charles. Th those guys know, hey, I'm here for the team. All right. So uh, and I got credit longer than train smoke. I could talk about it for weeks. I can talk about it for hours. So I'm here for you, my brother. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Oh, most definitely, man. We um, And you know I appreciate you. Um, thank you to Sean Parker for introducing you um, to me, Brother Charles Thomas, uh, for introducing you to me as well. Um, this is some valuable information that you have uh, shared. Um, this um, this um, webinar has been, rec has been recorded. Um, I will forward it out to all of my regional and state bigger and better business directors, and it will also be on blueprint as well as our international bigger and better business YouTube page so that way you guys can review it over and over again or share it with your um, families as well as your communities, um, because the goal is to make sure that everyone is informed. All right, we want to be able to educate the masses on getting their credit restored um, these wills and trusts and things like that that brother shannon lee has talked about because these are some things that is very important because i see a lot of families um fighting over um various properties and different things like that um when these individuals pass on and it's it's, it's a shame that it happened and it opened my eyes up to make sure that i'd be able to get my affairs and different things in order especially with what is going on in these days and times um it ain't day by day no more it's second by second, minute by minute, man. Um, and we can transition at any minute, man. So great stuff, Brother Shannon Lee. Um, and to all everybody that participated in this call, I thank you so much for joining in. And we appreciate you from the international um, Bigger and Better Business team. With that being said, man, you, have a, you guys have a great night. Be safe and stay prayed up out here. Go mob, good night. Go mob, bro. Go mob, brothers. Great job, y'all. Thank you. Great job. Brother Gibson.